everybody, Mo Bunnell here, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. This is the fourth of five episodes with Linda Klein, a legend in law, senior managing shareholder at Baker Donaldson. More importantly, maybe she was the first female president of the Georgia Bar. She did such a great job there. She was president of the National American Bar Association, the ABA. I believe that's the largest professional service association on the planet. She ran the whole thing while she's practicing law and involved in all kinds of other community things. She's amazing. She's one of the people that I aspire to be, that I that I think is just an amazing role model for, for anybody I know. I particularly, I actually think of my daughters a lot as somebody that I, I think they could learn a lot from Linda and Linda inspires me. In this particular episode, we go straight into storytelling mode. This is super interesting. Given Linda's storied career, I ask her, what's the business development story that you're most proud of? That is an interesting question to somebody as successful as Linda, and she delivers a great story, and the lessons are rich. Let's get right into it. Here's Linda Klein. Everybody, it's it's Mo Bunnell, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm grinning again from ear to ear because Linda and I were just talking in between episodes. Just we need to see each other more. And we're like getting all these wins because we're hopefully creating some great content for you. But we're enjoying uh, just just spending time with each other, too. So, OK, we have recorded three amazing episodes. People, if you if audience, if you haven't watched them, they're all, they're all three, the ones right before this one. They are so darn good, where Linda talks about how she de deepens relationships very practically, how she thinks about first-time meetings. The last episode, how she personally prepares for client meetings so that you have the confidence, highest chance of success, such good stuff. This fourth episode in this season is, is one of my favorite ones. It's a little more storytelling. The goal of this episode is to be inspiring. And Linda, you, you've inspired even when you haven't been trying, so I can't even wait to see where this goes. But, I, but I, I, I know you never talk about yourself, but I need you to for our audience. And I want you to share a business development or relationship development story that you're particularly proud of. Many, 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 many years ago, I did a favor for an accountant. I didn't send him a bill. And it obviously made a difference to him, but honestly, I just forgot about it. And I barely remembered the person. And I definitely didn't remember uh, and still don't remember. I do not remember what I did to help him. A long time passed. I don't even remember how many years passed, but it was more than five. It may have been 10. One day, the phone rang. It was that accountant. And he had retired years earlier. So he certainly wouldn't be in a position to, to send me business at this point, but he was volunteering at a nonprofit where people who have business savvy, uh, help budding entrepreneurs start their business. And the call went something like this. Hi, Linda, this is John Jones. Do you remember me? Uh, uh well, bef thank goodness before I could answer him, he reminded me about who he was and what I did for him and how much it meant to him. And he told me that he had retired. It's great, John. I hope you're enjoying yourself and your grandchildren or whatever. And then he told me he was volunteering. And I expected he was going to ask me to help the group, to make a speech. And, and by the way, he did do that at a later date. And I was happy to help. But the purpose of the call was to tell me, and, and this is just about a quote, Everyone I meet asking for help there is a loser with a capital L, except this guy. And he needs a lawyer. Are you taking new clients? And the client was in an industry that I had to learn. The client sold niche products in a very mature industry, very tough business for most mature companies. But it turned out that the guy was a genius and knowing what to sell and how to make the product. Because if you would have asked me, this guy wasn't, couldn't possibly make it. He's starting out. It's a niche product. The industry's mature. There's a lot of competition from very successful mature companies. Well, 
I incorporated him, I helped get him started, and within nine months, nine months, he was the biggest client of our firm. Wow. I think you wanted me to tell you what I was most proud of. Yeah, so and, yeah, so keep going. Oh, in that story, let me actually say it so the audience knows okay. where we're headed is. What, and, I'll, and I'll just like let, ever, let the audience peek behind the curtain. When somebody shares a story they're proud of, and, you, and by the way, folks, you can ask somebody this at a client at dinner or whatever. It's an amazing couple step process. Share a story you're proud of and then say, what, gosh, what did you personally do that makes you so proud? And I got this from a good friend, Luke Burgess, who's written a book called Wanting, and he's just a genius. Um, highly recommend the book Wanting, love it. So, so back to you, Linda, w what are you personally most proud of in that story? That I made a difference in two people's lives. Mm. For the client, I helped him achieve his dream. Uh, I helped him start and grow a business. And by the way, it is still very successful. And it's providing for the next generation of his family and maybe even the one after that. Now, for the retired guy, he never forgot what I did to help him. I forgot, but he didn't forget. And it shows that investing in other people is always worthwhile. Uh, I think we said this in another episode, um, but I created an entire business development career over volunteering. And while my practice involves helping business people uh, uh, make their businesses run better, I, I like sharing our community endeavors to make things better. I like helping them solve their business problems. We solve problems and community problems together. And more importantly, we prevent problems from happening both in their business and in the community. Uh, that's what professionals do. And that's what I love to do. I love it. It, it reminds me, I, I was just on a Zoom call with some really high-end management consultants, global organization. Most of, It was early this morning in Eastern time where we're both because they, they, most of the folks were in Asia. Um, but some folks were really struggling with, I like this idea of helping people because that was a big theme. Like uh, you told us better story than I did. I should have you attend some of these calls. But uh, <laughs> they liked the idea of helping, but the, but the barrier was, oh, but I'm so busy. So how do you handle that, Linda? Because you're one of the busiest. I mean, you, you, you do so many things. How do you handle the helping with the demands of billable time and, and delivery and the contracts need to be done by December 31st and all that kind of thing? The truth is, is it's not hard if you spread it out over seven days. <laughs> uh, do I have a lot of free time? No. But the things that I do as a volunteer are the most rewarding things that I do. So it's just, to me, that's like being on vacation because I you know, only do what you love. Uh, and Mo will tell you that all the time. You, you've, gotta, you've gotta do what you love. And so if you do what you love, you're going to enjoy it. You'll meet new friends. I mean, it's not a chore to be part of your community. Well, if it is a chore to you, then don't do that. Yeah. But to me, it's not a chore to be part of my community. That's when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't know anyone. And the way I made friends was to become involved. I became involved in the bar association. I became involved in, in community activities. That's how I made friends. Yeah. And there's a, I love that because you do an amazing job of not only being involved in groups where you go to one event and you get a see and impact and learn from and stay connected with a dozen people, 120 people, 1200, whatever the, whatever the frame is or the event is, but you also do an amazing job of one-on-one -on -one contact. You know, Hey, I want to uh, introduce you to somebody or, Hey, I, I wrote this article and in a uh, law practice management management thought you might want it, or uh, here's a helpful, I don't know if you saw what happened in the appellate courts, but this is something that you might be interested in. How do you juggle the difference or how do you think about the difference between sort of getting involved in groups where you get a lot of scale and then also managing sort of that one-to-one, -one, that thoughtful, more personal outreach? I think for the latter, you just have to be curious. Uh, a, a lawyer once said to me, the only marketing I do is I read the newspaper. <clears throat> and then after I read the newspaper, I just call the people who are involved. Yeah. And 
it, at the time he I think he was from a a town that's now a big town that wasn't such a big town at the time and sure enough if he saw something involving the big bank he'd call the president of the bank and chances are they might know know them but uh I remember that uh, I saw that uh, a large client of mine uh, they they were not using us in a particular area of the law. And I read in the newspaper, literally read in the newspaper, that something involving their company in another area of the law was going on. I sent an email, and within 24 hours, we were doing all of their work in that area of the law. And nobody else bothered they I mean a giant company with all those law firms no one read the newspaper I'm the only one who read the newspaper the answer is yeah wow so if you're curious and you read periodicals and stay informed I mean nowadays people I don't think are as informed I mean there was a time when everybody took the local newspaper I don't think that happens anymore um, so another thing I do I read the obituaries um, it sounds creepy, but, and there was a time where we might have the person's will in our will file. But the point was, is I often see that someone I know has had a loss and I reach out to them. I think what's interesting about if, if we call it Linda level to everybody, like this is the top of the heap, <laughs> you do an amazing job. And I want to break this down into, into, uh, manageable chunks for folks. Cause it might seem like too much. But just getting involved in your community in some way, to your point, Linda, that you're actually passionate about. It doesn't feel like a chore, but it gives you energy because you believe in the cause or whatever. That's interesting because it gives you scale. The organization already exists. There's already meetings. There's already committees. You can get involved and use the mechanism that already exists to get to meet new people. Um, and then secondarily, this idea of, uh, you know, today, setting up a Google alert, reading the reading the newspaper, finding uh, some way to alert yourself of things that are going on, and then reaching out with, with empathy, with something meaningful, something helpful. Those two things can be incredibly powerful. Uh, just your thoughts on just staying involved, staying top of mind, if you will. Do it. <laughs> it it's that simple. Find what you like and go do it. If you are a runner, get involved in the track club. If you are an environmentalist, get involved in one of the environmental charities. If your kids play soccer, get there are there are infinity number of opportunities. If you can't find one that interests you, then you're I don't believe it. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I just I, like that. I just don't believe it. Yeah, I like it. And what I love about your approach is you either of these things, you're showing your human first, you're bonding with the person first, you're developing the relationship first. And that's an incredible way to convert over to, to commercial results later because you're not worried about commercial results. It's the, it's the most ironic thing in the world. So let's close out this episode with your thoughts on that exact issue. I know we've talked about this before. I think when sometimes people can go to networking events or, or meeting somebody in their first the first goal is I need to sell something or I'm where I want to talk to them about what I do. If, if you start with that, it doesn't work. It doesn't land right. It just seems disingenuous. But if you start with not worrying about those things, but truly just trying to add value and be helpful, the actual financial results come when you're not worried about the financial results. So give us your, give us your take on that kind of concept. And I think that'll be the perfect close. You just reminded me of one quick story. Yes, uh, do it. Um, I was at a, uh, continuing education dinner. I found myself seated next to a general counsel of a very, very large company. Um, uh, I never, ever once talked about myself. I listened. I talked about some other people in our law firm uh, and how they handled certain problems. And a couple of months later, we got an opportunity to pitch against 50 other firms, almost all of them had a prior relationship with the company. 15 were chosen and we were one of them. I love it. Isn't it neat and ironic and counterintuitive that the, the more the other person talks and the less you talk, 
the more people like us, or the more, I should say it, not you. The, the more the other person talk, the less we talk, the more they like us. And how memorable is that, that you were able to fast track what other firms probably spent years to get to that, sort of that last panel, that top 15, you were able to do in one conversation because of the way you handled it. That's just, it's, it's the perfect ending to this one. Um, and I'll say this one last thing. You had mentioned that you, you helped two people in that original story. I, my guess is you helped dozens and dozens because not only did you help the person achieve their dreams, not only did you help the retired accountant, but you helped all these people at Baker Donaldson serve and do the best work that they could. And, you know, when you start talking about a firm's biggest client, there were a lot of lawyers that were finding meaning in the work that they were doing too. So through one action, that little, that little favor you did an accountant years before, you were actually able to help dozens and dozens of people. And I think that's mm -hmm. super cool. So Linda, well, people- in, yeah. in full disclosure, um, that was the firm that I merged, we merged into Baker Donaldson. So it was before Baker Donaldson. Okay, so the, I get it. I get but it, it still was the biggest client of that firm. Yeah, I get it. So the denominator was a little bit bigger, but 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 still the impact, dozens and dozens and dozens of people. So Linda, people are going to want to reach out to you. They're going to want to say thank you, potentially even ask your advice on a legal issue or the business matter that has legal implications. How should they do that? Oh, I'd love to talk to anyone who has a question. Uh, LinkedIn is a good way to find me. Uh, email is a good way to find me, lkline at bakerdonaldson.com. Awesome. And we'll put those in the show notes, everybody. Hey, make sure you follow, subscribe to the show, set up those notifications. We got one more amazing episode with Linda coming up next.